Joe Biden is expected to tap Jeff Saints to replace the outgoing White House Chief of Staff, Ron Klain. Now, the move has been slammed by progressives for a reason. Well, Zients has a history of profiteering from healthcare, it appears. Yes, that's right. So, Revolving Door Project Executive Director Jeff Hauser explained this. Americans are appalled by profiteering in healthcare. Jeff Zients has become astonishingly rich by profiteering in healthcare. Americans are aghast at how social media companies have built monopolies and violated privacy laws. Zayn served on the board of directors of Facebook as it was defending itself against growing attacks from both political parties. Now, an article in the American Prospect last year also detailed Zayn's exploits in the healthcare industry. It said this. Zients, who was replaced as COVID-19 response coordinator back in April, has controlled, invested in, and helped oversee healthcare companies that were forced to pay tens of millions of dollars to settle allegations of Medicare and Medicaid fraud. They have also been accused of surprise billing practices and even medical malpractice. Taken together, an examination of the companies that made science rich paints a picture of a man who seized on medical providers as a way to capitalize on the suffering of sick Americans. In the end, it seems to have all paid off. The most egregious violation is documented in a 2015 Justice Department settlement announcement. Portfolio Logic, the investment firm Science founded with his own money, agreed to pay almost $7 million to resolve allegations of fraudulent Medicare and Medicaid billing involving a subsidiary that it purchased in 2007. It really seems like um, either Biden is not taking issue with someone who makes a profit off of the American people when they are suffering in terms of medical needs, or maybe kind of just doesn't care. I really don't know, Cenk. Yeah, so context is important here. The funny thing, tragic thing is that he was among considered among the moderates that Biden could have picked. Uh, so there were two other uh, chief staff possibilities that were far more pro corporate than this incredibly wealthy finance guy. Okay, <laughs> so that's the world we live in. Uh, so which, you know, m again, massively pro corporate uh, caretaker would you like to run the government? So this guy is, you know, s seven out of ten on that scale, uh, as opposed to the other guys who were nine and a half out of ten. Uh, on that scale. Uh, by the way, to add uh, extra trouble to this, uh, they're basically saying, and it's amazing how brazen it is, uh, and and no one that's reporting it is acting outraged at all. That Biden is basically going to shift his attention to getting reelected going forward, and this new guy is going to run the country. Oh, okay, uh, great to hear. Well, I guess he. Did, I'm happy he didn't pick the nine and a half out of ten conservatives. Right, but here uh, more context. Ron Klain uh, is the chief of staff uh, for the first two years. He's stepping down now. Ron Klain was pretty good. He's I don't know a six out of ten on the corporate scale. Right, you're not going to get a progressive, of course not. Right, but Ron Klain was considered pretty good to really good to progressives because he would listen to them. <laughs> it's like the, the Washington standard is. Remember, half at least half the Democratic Party is progressive. They're like. We have listened to people who represent half our voters some of the time. Whoa, that's why Klain was a legend. Okay, this new guy, not as much, not as much. So look, on the Medicare and Medicaid fraud, I have two thoughts about it. Look, they bought a subsidiary. Did they do it before they bought it or after they bought it? How much was this guy involved in the day-to-day -day operations? Because I want to be fair. If he was like Rick Scott and he, you know, basically ran the company, then it's one thousand percent on him. If it was something that they did, uh, that company did before they bought him, well, I don't know that you should have bought him. But hey, that's a little bit of a different equation. So those de details uh, are not clear. But by the way, the second point here is this is why uh, Democrats are so soft on Republicans. So Rick Scott committed his company committed the largest Medicare fraud in American history. It was just. One of the forget Medicare fraud. It was one of the biggest robberies in American history, and Democrats almost never criticize him on it. Why? Because sometimes their chief of staff to the president of the United States of America has done similar things, so they neutered themselves because they're also pro corporate. And this is the uniparty that we have, and they go back and forth, back and forth. But at the end of the day, Adrian, the most salient fact is that 
they're not going to do anything for the next two years anyway, right? It's not like Biden can pass something through a Republican House. That's got an approximately 0% chance of happening. It's not like Biden was that you know, Democratic to begin with. He largely agrees with this chief of staff. He agrees with the other guys he would have hired too, the ones that were nine and a half out of 10 conservative, right? Uh, and he didn't really want to do half his agenda anyway. He made sure that a $15 minimum wage was killed right out of the gate. He did that, not the Republicans. So Biden's gonna be super happy doing absolutely nothing for the next two years. Everyone, anyone telling you otherwise I was weirdly lying to you, probably to appease the powerful. Absolutely, and for some reason in our country, we really revere people who are wealthy and we revere them so much that we really don't necessarily care how they got their wealth, even if it meant they got over on the American people and took advantage and exploited us. And maybe it's because the country is founded upon exploitation of a people's, I really don't know. But I know that it's disgusting and it's detrimental, but it doesn't seem that Biden really has that problem with Zeitz, even though his performance when he was in government also also seems to be criticized. We know this, that the Zines led COVID response, it refused to challenge Big Pharma's monopoly control in the US and globally over technologies that relied crucially on public support. And as a result, the United States and other rich countries failed to expand vaccine supply sufficiently to meet global need. But of course, on the flip side, that during his term as COVID-19 response coordinator, Zainz was far and away the wealthiest member of Biden's cabinet, disclosing assets worth at least 89.3 million and as much as 442.8 million. Wow, that's that's a nice little uh, nice little gap there. It leaves a lot of wealth potential, I'm sure. It's just again, it's astonishing how much we revere individuals who have considerable amounts of money, even if they got it doing the most dastardly and, as far as I'm concerned, embarrassing things. Cenk? Yeah, Adrian. You know, it's to me, I don't really care about the money, right? So the establishment thinks that if you have money, that means by definition. You're a very successful person. Oh, go review them all. The great men, the great men with all of their money, right? Oh, come on. We see them make a thousand mistakes, let alone a thousand things that they did with bad intent, right? On the other hand, having money doesn't make someone evil. Oprah's got money. <laughs> LeBron's got money. A lot of different people have money, right? It's the question is, what do you do with that money and how did you earn that money? Look, in his particular case, again, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Different people. And some whom I, you know, you you can trust, etc. Um, and take this one with whatever grain of salt you want. And I'm sure the Republicans will go nuts over it. But uh, for example, Dr. Fauci says he's enormously competent, and it's really important to have a competent chief of staff. That, well, that's true. Okay, so that's your upside for him. On the other hand, uh, you know, he's among the people who made sure, as Adrian pointed out, that the healthcare companies did not give the vaccine out globally at reduced prices. Because God forbid they would have cut into profits at all. It's possible that millions of people died because of that, not in America, but outside of America. But here in America, hardly a peep, hardly a peep. Biden pretended that he was in favor of it, the forcing the companies to, to give their vaccine across the world. But it was a total joke. He did not enforce that at all. He did absolutely nothing to push that forward. And the companies were like, no, we choose profits over human beings' lives. And Zeitz was perfectly comfortable with that. Why? Because he made a fortune from healthcare companies. So this is not that complicated. Okay, so yes, that's a problem. Finally, look, Klain was Ron Klain was smarter too. Why? Because he met with progressives. Did progressives get anything? No. No, I think that they look in a lot of ways, if I'm being honest with you guys, and I am, progressives are kind of humiliated in the first two years. Oh, we're going to give you every all oh, 15 minimum wage, voting rights, paid family leave, Green New Deal. Oh, yeah, we're going to be FDR 2.0. And then when it actually came to pass, they're like, no, we're not going to give you a goddamn thing. Here, here's a couple of crumbs off a of Green New Deal. Go enjoy it, but we're not giving you anything else, okay? And then progressives have to be like, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. See, that's smart politics by Ron Klain. It's not good for the country, but at least it's smart. These guys are instead are going to be antagonistic for oh, do what you gonna do. But what difference does it make? Are progressives going to fight back against Biden? Unfortunately, approximately zero percent chance of that as well.